Hello all, welcome back to Wingers Capsule. Today we will discuss some questions that might ask for NEET MDS or Assistant Dental Surgeon exams. First one. The maximum penetration among the following is seen with which ray? A. Alpha, B. Beta, C. Gamma and D. Electron beam. Answer is option C. Gamma. The electromagnetic spectrum which is in the order of uh, energy or in the order of decreasing in the wavelength is like this. Radio waves, TV waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, gamma rays and cosmic rays. So, Maximum penetration is for gamma. Next question. Commonly used collimating device. A. Aluminium filter. B. Lead diaphragm. C. Molybdenum cup. And D. Tungsten filament. Answer is option B. Lead diaphragm. Third one. The darkening of radiograph x-ray depends on all except. A. Thickness of the object. B. Quality and quantity of X-rays C. Angulation cone and D. Velocity of electron emitted from the cathode Answer is option C. Angulation cone Rest all depends on the darkening of radiograph Next question Which of the following are most sensitive to X-rays? A. Tooth buds and salivary glands B. Nerve and muscle tissue C. Hair and nails and D. Cartilage Answer is option A, tooth buds and salivary glands. Void organs, then gonads, mucous membrane, uh, bone marrow, intestine, these all are highly radio sensitive. Whereas salivary glands, lungs, then cartilage, bone, um, fine vasculature, this all comes under the intermediate uh, sensitive. Then low sensitive, low radio sensitive uh, Organs include the muscle cells, neurons, RBC, optic lens, etc. So, from this option, the most radio sensitive is tooth buds and salivary glands, which come under intermediate radio sensitive. Fifth one, the skin of a patient undergoing radiotherapy will show after two weeks A. Erythema, B. Depigmentation, C. Radiation induced carcinomas, and D. No change. Answer is option A. Erythema. By the end of second week of radiotherapy, there occurs redness, inflammation of the mucous membrane. By the end of the therapy, mucositis occurs. Next question. Penny test is the quality assurance test to detect A. Fixed depletion B. Unsafe illumination C. Mission malfunction and D. Contaminated solution Answer is option B. Unsafe illumination Penny test it's also known as coin test and it is done in order to evaluate the uh, proper safe lighting conditions. It's done uh, in such a manner that we have to open we have to open the film packet and we have to place a coin on the film and leave it about uh, for about approximately five minutes. Then process the film as usual. And if the image of the coin is seen on the resultant film, we can say that the room is not light safe or intensity of the uh, safe light is higher than the recommended one. This is the penny test. Next one, localization of an object is done by A. Parallel technique, B. Bisecting angle technique, C. Tube shift technique and D. Occlusal technique. And this option C. Tube shift technique. Eighth one, best to radiograph for viewing fracture of maxillary bone is A. Submendo vertex, B. PA view, C. Waters view and D. Towns projection. Answer is option C. Waters view. Waters view is also called as occipito mendel view. It's a variation of PA view. We can observe fracture of psychoma, maxillary sinus, then nasal septum all by using the Waters view projection. That is mainly viewing the fractures of the middle third of the face, mainly evaluating the maxillary sinus. Also, a small portion of the coronoid process of the mandible 
uh, between the maxilla and zygomatic arch can also be demonstrated by using Waters view. Next one, a radiolucent lesion in the posterior part of the mandible anterior to the angle has radiographic feature of a cyst. After surgical intervention, the history report shows submaxillary salivary gland tissue. One may conclude the lesion is likely a residual cyst, b traumatic bone cyst, c Stephanie's bone cyst and d a lingual mandibular bone cavity. Answer is option C. Stephanie's bone cyst. Next one. An African American patient shows a radiolucent area surrounding the apices of mandibular anterior teeth which are vital. The most probable diagnosis is A. Periapical abscess B. Periapical granuloma C. Periapical cemental dysplasia and D. Condensing osteitis Answer is option C. Periapical cemental dysplasia it's also known as cementoma. Occurs mostly in the mandibular anterior region. This is associated with the vital tooth. Whereas a periapical abscess and periapical granuloma are associated with non-vital teeth. And in condensing osteitis, the mandibular first molar is mainly involved. Here it's clearly given that shows a radiolucent area surrounding the apices of mandibular anterior teeth and which are vital. So the correct option is periapical cemental dysplasia. Thanks for watching this video. Please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you.